welcome back, everybody, to Maniacal Music Musings. I'm your host, Jeremy, as always. Here to do some rhyming and stealing with my full posse in effect. Especially the Fresh Prince. I love to thrust my way around the Warp Asylum, and I won't stop until I thunder kiss 65 girls. Yeah, I said it. It don't stop, they told me, until you find a gothic chick and take her to the crossroads in for some fun. You might not come out of that fun, but it's going to be fun. My co-host, however, just called me to read his death note about buckets of blood during the killing season. He bends over while on Brass Monkey to show Bella Morte his black sunshine. Soon it just turns into Grindhouse of Go-Go up in there. If I was you, I would catch the show and yell, whoop, whoop, as you stare into his star face. Welcome to planet, motherfucker. Meet my psychological slag, Chancy motherfucking Graif. Hi. Every time. And yes, folks, we are your musers are back once again to bring you another great episode, another great three albums. And I actually mean that this time. And we are joined by a guest, as always. This week, it's Leanne Linsky, stand-up comedian and founder slash CEO of Plausible. And I hope I said that right. <laughs> I I was looking at Plausible the other day, and I'm like, is it plausible? Plausible? I'm like, I'm, I'm guessing it's plausible, but I never am sure. But we are so happy to have you here. How are you doing tonight, Leanne? Thanks. I'm great. I'm very excited to be here and for this whole conversation to go down. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna. It's. I'm, I'm. I'll say these three albums are completely opposite ends of every spectrum, and I mean that in the best possible way. So, <laughs> so I mean, it's gonna be an interesting freaking show, and we're gonna have fun talking about these albums. But first things first, why don't you tell us? About Plausible a little bit. Tell us what it is for those who haven't heard of it. Yeah. So Plausible is an online comedy club where there's really no gatekeepers, no auditions, no IMDb requirements or anything like that. So on one side, comedians can log in. They can they get all of the tools to schedule, create the virtual stage, to perform, and ticketing services to set their own ticket prices if they choose to do so and monetize their comedy Uh whether they have one person buy a ticket or hundreds of people buy tickets, it's up to them. And on the other side, we have comedy fans who sign up, create a free account. They can log in, check out the talent directory of comedians who've already signed up, made a profile, and they can peruse the show listings page and check out any free shows, open mics, whatever they want to see, as well as purchase tickets for other ones. Everything happens in real time. Everybody can see and hear each other and laugh with no audio delays or legs. And, uh, laugh together from anywhere in the world so yeah that's what plausible is sounds pretty incredible i'm gonna have to go check that out and yeah. gonna have to tell our good friend C we're gonna have to tell our good friend ca canoe about that because i think that's something that she actually could use in her career might might help her boost her a little bit more even than she already is even though she's killing the philly scene so but so to get on with the official show leanne what album did you decide to bring us and actually I will say before you say that though, we are not the fir- you're not the first person that wanted to bring this album, but that person that person gave me two choices and I picked another choice. But you 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 gave that choice. I was like, ooh, oh, nice, nice. I'll go with it. So, what is that album and why was it so important to you? So I picked uh, Beastie Boys' "License to Ill" because that came out in 1986 and I was in high school at the time. And uh, that was when I bought it on a tape, a cassette tape. (laughs) I was driving a 1979 Ford Granada. That was my dad's car (laughs) with uh, no air, no radio, no anything. And so I literally had to get like one of those old boom boxes and throw it on the front seat next to me so I could play my tapes. But this is one that really takes me back to uh, 16, 17 years old and um, just doing all you do in high school all of the parties everybody had this book yeah which and uh chancy what did you think of leanne's album oh dude i was stoked as soon as i saw the option like i i actually purchased license to ill and i gotta say jeremy you're wrong these are actually connected in their own funny little way 
I'm on, I'm on one end of the spectrum. You're on the other end of the spectrum and her album's directly in the middle, specifically because of like Paul Rubin, the many, many, many multiple samples of rock songs that translate into my album when then the rap element that it translates into your album, which I got to, you know, I got really got to give props to the YouTube music algorithm. Cause when I hit random and fucking landed on that son of a bitch, I was like, Fuck it, sold to the man with gray in his hair. Well, I mean, same chance. Yeah, I was fucking. As soon as you, like I said, as soon as you, as soon as I saw the album you wanted to bring, I was like, "Fuck yes!" About time somebody brought the goddamn Beastie Boys on here, and it didn't have to be me. But I mean, I freaking, I loved the Beastie Boys for since freaking high school. I mean, I think I first heard of them even like in middle school, watching I Love the Eighties on VH1 and. Like they did, they were talking about the fight for your right out uh, video. And so that's when I first heard of them. And I was like, all right. I'm like, this is awesome. And I'm like, I started, uh, I, I bought the greatest hits at some point. I forget when that was, if it was later or early, but I bought the, I bought the greatest hits, I think in high school when I had a car and I used to blast that CD constantly all around town, make myself like the biggest cracker out there. But <laughs> hey. so, I mean, I, Yes, and Rick be. Rick Rubin fucking took those guys to another level, like for real. It it just basically started off a whole career of him doing that with literally everybody. Which I will say, the album you bought is not my favorite album they did. My favorite album they did, I've yet to bring it on the show, but it will be brought someday. And that was the last album they did, Hot Sauce Committee Part Two, because that. I bought that album in, in in college, and I freaking love that album. Like it's just such a, they didn't lose it. Freaking thirty years later, they didn't lose it. They still had like their skill. And then when uh, the one that passed, I want to say, I want to say it was uh, fuck, damn, it's been a while since I thought about this. Was it Mike? Which D? one of them? Yeah, when Mike D passed from uh, cancer, I believe. I mean, it was just. And they were supposed to put out more stuff after that, like that they had recorded already and whatnot, but I've yet to see anything really drop. So I, I'm guessing they're done with that. But I also heard there was a biography movie coming out about them eventually, but I've yet to see anything about that in a while. So I don't know. It seems like BC boys are kind of like just dead in the water at this point, which is sad because there's still so much skill with the two that are left that they could easily just get some guest rappers and make a great album. I understand not wanting to do it because your brother, like your, bro your brother in arms died, but still, it's just... It's just a uh, shame, shame, shame. But, well, to get on to the fun part of this, Leanne, what are your top five tracks off this album? Plus any honorable, mention, any honorable mentions you wanted to bring. Okay, so I have to say I like the entire album, and it's not often that I have an album that I like every single song and know every single song. So I have to put my glasses on. Uh, on this particular album, this was Tough Calls, uh, so in no particular order of my top five, but I put Slow Ride, She's Crafty, Paul Revere, Girls, and Brass Monkey. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, a few, damn, a bunch on there that are not even on my list, but that's, it's, it's Beastie Boys. Either I like what they're doing or I am not, am not like a huge fan of what they're doing. It's, I can't say they ever did an album where I liked every track. I can't say that. It's just. I, I respect them for what they did, and the tracks I love, I love, I love a lot. But, I mean, the ones that they, man, eh, I don't know. I'll get into mine, but Chansey, what are your top five? Well, I have an honorable mention as well. Okay. So, number five, yeah, number number six on mine is uh, Fight for Your Right, obviously. It deserves its place on there, but I don't want to go cliche. Uh, number five was No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Uh, number four was, uh, was girls. Number three was brass monkey. Number two was Paul Revere and number one was slow and low. That was mm -hmm. always my favorite song on that album when I had it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, see, okay. Chancey, well, just to one up you as always, I brought two honorable mentions because I'm that awesome, but and I listened to most of this album while trying not to die on my way home from work in this freaking snow ice storm we had today. But but my number seven was Posse in Effect, because just a damn good rap. And I love the word Posse for obvious reasons. And number six is The New Style, 
because I think that's the second song on the album, if I'm not mistaken, and it just comes in fucking hot. Like, comes in hot. Number five is the first out of three that I heard before. Well, actually, I've heard all these because I've, heard, I've, seen, I've listened to this album in the past, but number five is one of the ones that was on the greatest hits I've listened to for 30 years. Brass Monkey, because that freaking beat on Brass Monkey is classic, and I'm, a, I'm not gonna lie. To this day, I still don't know what the fuck a brass monkey is. I'm assuming it's some kind of beverage, but I do it's not a, know yeah. what a brass monkey. It's a, li- it's an al- alcoholic beverage. It's like a, a, fucking what is that? Like a malt liquor kind of thing. I figured it was like a forty of some kind, but you never know. Like so, I don't know. I always, I you know, it was some kind of drug slang when I was younger that like I didn't recognize. <laughs> but I mean, I'm from New York, so you think I would know New York slang? But it is what it is. And what's going on, Matt? Thank you for uh, coming by to check out the show. Appreciate you. And number four was Rhyming and Stealing, because I honestly forgot that I forgot the song existed, and it's just freaking such, yeah. a way to open a, such a way to open an album. Like, such a way to open an album. Number three is Girls, because <laughs> it is the funniest, one of the funniest songs they do. I mean, just the beat in it, it's just, uh, I, I don't know. It's something about it is just funny. I, it always brought me joy. Number two is Fight for Your Right, because it fucking has to be. It's Fight for Your Right. Back when Beastie Boys were, like, more rock almost than rap. Like, that song is basically almost a rock song in ways. And then, fucking love it. I do fucking love it, because all my favorite rappers can do rock and rap as well. So, I love it. And number one is one of my top five Beastie Boys songs of all time, of course. No Sleep Till Brooklyn. It's just, being from New York, it's a classic song. I've been in Brooklyn. I've been in Queens. I've been... I've seen places where the Beastie Boys have been in New York City and performed and shit. Like, so it's freaking awesome. Like, I mostly like to Brooklyn is a classic. And just that chorus, ugh, the way they scream it, just, it's so legendary. You can't. And plus, it's, it's in Pets, one of my favorite cartoons. So, it's in Pets. <laughs> Secret Life of Pets. <laughs> it's not the first place I heard it, Chansey, but, so you can't get mad me for that one. But it's a perfect representation of that song. I mean, that that whole soundtrack's bomb. They got some of them down there, for God's sake. But so yeah, honestly, I yeah, I was very happy you brought this album. It was one I pr- pretty much already knew because I went through the whole Beastie Boy discography like in my old job, well, two old jobs to go back like ten years ago, and fucking the whole discography is fucking incredible. But legends, legends, and I'm pretty sure they got didn't they get into the Rock and Roll Hall, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame a couple years ago, if I'm not mistaken. I wouldn't be surprised if they had. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure they did. I'm pretty sure I saw a video of like Ad Rock and uh, MCA like they're freaking accepting it. So, I mean, good for them. And I do love their appearance in Futurama. I do. They had to do that, and it was freaking hilarious. But all right, Chancy, what album does Doth grace upon us tonight? So. I mean, aside from my usual hit random on my playlist and go with whatever comes up, uh, ironically, this album actually, like, it did a lot of stuff for me. Because I, uh, well, for real, though, I mean, like, you know I'm a sucker for a sample, and this song is actually my real first introduction into a blatant sample of movie audio or something from a movie directly. And uh, same thing with the Beastie Boys album. Like, that was one of my first identifiable introductions to, like, hey, that's this song, but they're using it in this fashion. And uh, I chose for mine is uh, White Zombies, La Sexististo, uh, Devil Music Volume 1. Yeah. Chance you bringing his fucking devil music around here. God damn it. <laughs> Like, like I could talk, like I could, like I could talk, but, uh, Leanne, what did you think of White Zombie? Oh, okay. So at first I was like, wait, what? When I saw the album title, because I don't remember titles of things very much, but I was like, oh, my husband was like, oh, zombie. I was like, yeah, okay. Got you. I'm on board. So, um, I was like, wow, this is so different. Just like what you were saying at the top, but then I also agree with Chansey. Like, I don't think these three albums are that far off from one another. There are certain elements of them that I all find. So, um, all right. So you wanted my top five off this one? Well, actually, uh, just your review at this point. We'll get to the top fives then. Okay. But 
so yeah so i was like okay so there's just this element of it with certain um rhythms and beats and everything that i'm like all right very similar for me as what i get from bc boys licensed ill yeah and obviously vocals are much different lyrics are considerably different but you know it's that it's got some elements where I'm like, hey, you could swap some of these things back and forth and it would work. You, you could. I mean, you could. And I'm sure, well, actually, I mean, they White Zombie and Beastie Boys were in the same era, were they not, Chancy? I believe. Uh, six late years. Late 80s. They were yeah, it was. She's right. Well, was this, was this White Zombie's first album? Because I don't know White Zombie like that, but. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then yeah. Nice. Damn, Rob, Rob Zombie, Rob Zombie's old came after the Beastie Boys. Damn, I always forget how old the Beastie Boys are. Like, I always do, because Rob Zombie looks old as shit. He looks like he's in his fucking eighties the way he looks now. Yeah, I think Beastie Boys are in the fifties. I mean, damn. I think I think they're both around the same age, like chronologically as far as their ages go. But like, I mean. Yeah, I, maybe. I don't know. But well, I will say, Chancy, that when you wanted to bring White Zombie, which is also an album that I guess wanted to bring in 1.2, but I chose a different album instead. And I got I, I keep doing that. <laughs> I keep choosing. It was a better album, though. Oh, what the hell? Mm, I want to say, didn't he bring Ozzy, I think, instead? Yeah, I think he brought Ozzy instead. So, I mean, come on. If I have a choice between Ozzy and White Zombie, it's obviously going to be Ozzy. <laughs> but. I, you brought White Zombie, and I was like, all right. I never actually have listened to this album all the way through. I've heard one or two of the tracks off of it, and it's just Rob Zombie. I always, I love Rob Zombie. His movies, his music, I always loved it. His solo, his solo music, I freaking love. I wish you brought that album, honestly. But, but I mean, White Zombie is classic. I always see the funny thing is when I was younger and I heard Thunder the Kiss '65 on the radio and whatnot. I always thought it was like it was a more classic rock song from like the '70s. I didn't realize it was like such a new song until like years later, just because it was playing on like the classic rock station, dude. Like most music from that genre didn't that gener that generation didn't play in the classic rock station where I lived. So usually it was all like Fleetwood Mac and Sticks in Chicago and stuff like that. So I mean, come on, <laughs> give me a break here. But I enjoyed the I enjoyed it. I mean, it's it's Zombie's voice is freaking amazing for any song, and his guitarist and bass player are freaking amazing. So. And his drum player is fucking incredible. The, the drums in the one song, oh my god. But, but Chancy, what were your uh, top five off your own album there, buddy? So, I got like four honorable mentions. <clears throat> of course you do. Uh, number nine was uh, Welcome to Planet, Motherfucker. Uh, number eight was... Uh, <laughs> I'll get I'll get to you. I'll get to you in a minute. Yeah, okay. Uh number eight is Knuckle Buster two or Knuckle Duster two B and then uh Thrust. Those kind of run since they run in together, I put them in the same category. Uh number seven was uh Cosmic Monsters Incorporated. Um number six was Black Sunshine. Uh number five was Spider Baby. Uh, number four was Grindhouse. Number three was uh, Soul Crusher. Uh, number two was Warp Asylum for, well, three and two, essentially. A lot of it has to do with their usage from the music of Hellbound Hellraiser 2. And then, uh, naturally, my number one is Knuckle Duster 1A and Thunder Kiss 65, because literally the first time I ever heard, dude, the first time I heard Thunder Kiss, like, I was a kid and it's one it's on that list of like of songs that affected me in a very 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 serious manner like black sabbath black sabbath is the first one for me and then this one was an immediate second like i because i i'm i was born in 85 so like by the time i actually heard black sabbath black sabbath it's like 89 90 and then within the next couple years i'm hearing things like living color cult of personality and fucking this song and the reason I bring up Living Color Cult of Personality was because I thought it was super awesome how I come across the Beastie Boys, all-white rap group, Living Color, 
all black like rock metal group exquisite in all capacities and then i'm listening to this thunder kiss and it gets to that part it goes i don't try anything i just do it and it goes into those chords and it hits that fucking e and it's just mm-hmm. want to try me dum, dum, dum. like fucking i'm a, i'm just i'm a child and something i'm like i'm like something's happening like i don't know what this is but something's happening there was something that, it's just so profound and that ladies and gentlemen is the story of chances first direction but uh i mean well, you keep saying something's happening, Chancy, and usually when you're a man, that means one thing. But uh. yeah, God, you know, God forbid we actually have an emotional range and fucking discover something we haven't felt for the first time that doesn't feel, that doesn't involve your fucking your tiny pre prepubescent giny dink tingling, Jeremy. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. <laughs> well, one tiny was never an adjective in my life. Two. You're gonna give away our secrets, man. We don't, we gotta keep the fucking stereotype going. We gotta keep the stereotype going. You don't want the mass media to know that we have things called feelings for fuck fuck's sake here. But rub some dirt on it, Chancy. Rub some dirt on it. But uh, well, Chancy, I actually had two honorable mentions for uh, White Zombie there. Yes, I'm surprised. And number I'm not surprised at all. I'm not, I'm not sure you're not, but number seven uh, was Warp Asylum because. Good way to end the album. Good way to end the album. Number six was Black Sunshine because the guitar and that was fucking incredible. That was up higher before I got knocked down. Number five was Thrust because one, any song called Thrust I fucking love. And two, yes, Santi, we are men. But number five, I mean, just it's just a damn good song. Yeah, I was gonna say, four, I just like the song, but that's on you, bro. Number four was uh, Starface because the drum solo in the fucking beginning of that was incredible. And I hear Starface, I'm thinking of Kiss. It's just the way it goes. So, I mean, it brought back memories of Kiss. So, and number three, which is why I made a certain noise during your top five, motherfucker. Uh, Number three was Welcome to Planet Motherfucker slash Psychological Slag because I freaking love that I love freaking that. That's that opener is just freaking beyond belief. Good. I mean, it just comes in so heavy. His voice drops in. It's just like, oof, Rob Zombie. Yes. I don't know why people hate on him. I don't know why people hate on him. But and then number two, surprisingly, is Thunder Kiss '65, which I I could have swore when I started this would have been number one. I could have swore when I started this album this morning. I'm like, this is gonna be number one. I already know it. I was mistaken. But I mean, it's Thunder Kiss '65 and. Like you said, that little blurb there with the freaking uh, sample, I'm like, when I was younger and I heard that, I was just like, I like this. I don't know why, but I like this. I will keep listening to this. This one song. I know I know. any further there's one song until today, but I don't know why, but just didn't. And then number one was Grindhouse A Go-Go, because that song is fu- so freaking fun. That song is fun. And I mean, grind, it's just, it's a fun song. I mean, and the guitar in it is off the track. And as my coworker said, say, when he walked by and saw I was listening to White Zombie, he's like, oh, her, the bassist in that band is so hot. I'm like, I'm looking at the album cover like, yeah, she is. Yeah, she is. All right. So, I mean, her bass playing just gets accentuated by her being good looking. I don't make these rules. They just exist in the world. So, I mean, it's not always the case, but in this case, it just worked. So, I enjoyed the hell out of your album, Chancy, you do not disappoint me this week like you have in the past. I will reserve your whipping for another week. I'll tell Casey to take it easy on you this weekend, okay? Okay? Good. But now, folks. Wait, listeners, did, did Leanne give her fucking top five? No. You no. fucking, dude, this, I, you need to fucking, honestly, Jeremy, you need to slam your dick in a drawer. Like, <laughs> I can't believe you. I mean, you've no, no, no. You've you've done fucked up, sir. This is the first time in the history of this goddamn show where you have pulled a bracket move on a fucking solo show. You should hang your head in shame, sir. Hang it. I I hang my head in shame every fucking day of my life. But um, and uh, Katie, don't get mad. But I gotta go slam my dick in a drawer for Chancey's request. It's going on. It's own. not it's a request. On. It is not it's a request. request. Okay, it's a, it's a demand. demand. It's a demand, and I gotta go do it. Uh, it's like going our OnlyFans, but um, the pain, 
un under the pain section. But I apologize, Leanne. Chancey's album got me all tingly and excited here, just like Chancey when he was a young lad. But uh, what were your top five for White Zombie? That's all right. This calls for the readers back on because I wrote this down and I made some notes. This Ooh. was funny because you and I actually have a lot in common this time. So I wrote down um, my top. Oh, I wrote down. No, I wrote down. Uh, six. Well, if you have, I was going to say, if you have more than five, that's fine because you can do honorable mentions and shit. That's no problem. So these are oh, in yeah. no particular order. But I, uh, Starface, because I really like the drums. And then, like, 43 seconds in, you have that really great guitar come on it. Or is it the bass? Or the, I don't know. I don't remember now, but I wrote guitar. So I'm assuming that was right. But yeah, I really like that. And then I also put down Grindhouse. Uh, and that one, it made me think of Iron Man a little bit. I yes. Why. I did hear a little bit of uh, Black Sabbath in one of their songs, I will say. So, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, I, yeah, I could do a little Black Sabbath, a little Ozzy here. And then uh, I also put down and, Rush. Uh, actually, and not that. Not, what was that? <laughs> okay, uh, uh, no, no. I was gonna say because I, I totally forgot. I did, I did hear some Iron Maiden in one of their songs too, like an Iron Man guitar rift. Black yeah. Sabbath, I, Black Sabbath. They, they did Iron I heard, Man. I, no, no, no. I heard in a different song. I heard an Iron Maiden riff. I can't. I didn't write down what fucking song oh, it was. I don't remember now. Oh, because we were talking about the song that she heard. Iron. I, Man. I know that. I know. I, I know that. But that, <laughs> that, that made me. That, that made me fucking remember. Chanty. You, you didn't clutch, you didn't you but, didn't specify you didn't specify shit. We're having one conversation and you just zipped on over to a whole ass other track that nobody's brought the fuck out. No, because I, I, I did. I did. I did. I did say that I heard the Black Sabbath as well. And then when when I was talking about that, it fucking came to me. I'm like, oh yeah, there was one track they did where it sounded like an Iron Maiden riff, like the whole song. So I just wanted to bring that up because I remembered it all of a sudden. So fuck you, yeah. Chancy. Go eat it. Go eat a bowl. Go eat a bowl of Cheerios. Uh, I also put down Thrust. That one, that, there's a vibe to it that takes me back to like the the 80s, early 90s uh, with a guitar. So I was mm. like, oh, yeah, this totally makes me think of all the high school parties with little headbangers, little burnout. Uh, then I also uh, put down Welcome to the Planet, Motherfuckers. I like that. That was really fun. That's the uh, the Go-Go song, right? Uh, no, what what what's up, land motherfuckers slash psychosocial slag is the uh, okay. That's first, it. I'm not, or not psychosocial, uh, psychological. I'm thinking a slipknot here. Oh, grindhouse was the go go, which I already talked about. So yeah, planet. Yeah. Welcome to the planet. Uh, I have that one down, and then I think I wrote down because that one was longer, and there was I think that was a, yeah, that one was like over six minutes, and then you get like. Five minutes in, and there's like this whole shift change. Anyway, I love, I really dug that. And then I also had Black Sunshine, which Chancy had too. Yeah. Well, Chancy has that. Chancy has that when he bends over. But I mean, <laughs> yeah. I swear to God, Chancy, the references I, I make more references to your asshole than I, than I do anybody else in the world. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's on you, bud. <laughs> what can I say? Case, girl Casey expire uh freaking inspires me. But but uh so all right. Now that everybody did the top eyes, right? I just got checked down because I fucked up once already. I can't fuck up again. But I get one of those per night. And trust me, I use that one every fucking night. But uh all right, folks. It is time. It is time. I've been waiting for this moment for many a moon. Many a moon since we started this here show. And you see, when she, I swore to myself because this has been this Alan's been coming up in my uh, like songs list quite a lot lately. So I've been promising myself the next time somebody brings a rap album on the show, I ain't bringing this album to go against it, no matter what the fuck album I'm bringing it against. And nobody's brought a rap album on the show for like fucking two months, and it's been pissing me off because I wanted to bring this fucking album on. So when she when Leanne finally said Beastie Boys, it's like thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's another white boy rap group. So yay, it kind of works. So 
I had to go with this album, which got me into this band. And I have to go with Twisted's Wicked album, or as it stands for, as they both these other people now know, Wish I Could Kill Every Day. Which it took me a while, it took me a while to put that connection together, honestly, looking at the C D cover and being like, Oh, but for those who don't know, because they well, I've brought Twisted on this show a couple times, but different albums. But Twisted is ICP's basically spin-off group. Uh they founded Twisted was the first group ICP ICP ever signed on their own label, and since then Twisted now started their own label and blown up and they are now more rock than rap a lot of the time. I can't explain what they're doing nowadays too much, but it works. They got fans. And actually, they're coming to Worcester near me for a 420 weekend. I would love to go, but to find someone to watch the kids two weekend nights in a row, I highly freaking doubt it's going to happen. But And I don't have the money to go, really. But even though it's not bad. But still, I Twisted is just one of the most amazing rap duos ever. And this album is their fucking... It's right in the middle of their career, and this album is what turned me on to them because they are so. This this album is just them. It's just their pure personalities, and it touches on so many horror movie elements and whatnot. And I just it made me fall in love with Twisted. I went back to their older stuff. I've been listening to them ever since. It's just such a good album. There literally is not. There's only one song I really don't like on this album. The rest of the songs are just pure fire, and it's just an incredible fucking album. It shows their darker side. I mean, they're, they were always a little dark, but they are always more stoner jokey. But this album just showed, like, their dark sides, and that's what got me into them. And then they stayed with the darkness for a little while. They even did an album called The Darkness. And then they became kind of rockers. They did a song with Danny Filth, which is fucking fire. But And nowadays, they're running their own record label with five or six different artists on it right now. There was, like, ten at one point, but shit happened in rap. So, I had to bring this on because I love this album, and and I also want a chance to experience this album because I felt like it would match with his Dark Dark Soul. So, Leanne, what did you think of Twisted, and have you ever heard of this group even? Okay, so I had never heard of this group before you shared this with me, and I was like, what is, you know, I had no idea what to expect. So, first, I opened up. <laughs> the, the names of the songs i was like well this is going to be dark and i was not disappointed in the fact that it was very dark and i was like okay that said i was actually pleasantly surprised that i really like the music right so i was like oh this is something like i i could listen to this this is good i mean the the lyrics are dark and i'm not sure how i feel about but like I wish I could kill every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, but, um, but then it's I, hardcore. But then I looked them up and they're into all the horror flicks and everything. All that that kind of stuff. <laughs> At least that's what I read and that's what I hope is actually true. Oh, well, I mean they're they're hardcore rap artists. So I mean yeah. hardcore hardcore rap is just basically Rapping like you're watching, it's like you're watching a horror movie without actually seeing anything. I mean, if you watch one of their music videos, it's kind of like watching a horror movie. So, there you go. I mean, the one music video actually for this album, uh, for Ha 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 Ha, like, it actually is, it's about two serial killers that, like, are, they're killing each other, and then, like, they end up meeting at their, at, at one of their, one of their houses, and, like, like, they're both planning to go kill each other, and, like, they didn't even know it. And then, like, when they open the door, they just, like, smile at each other. Like, it's just, it's yeah. funny. Like, Chancey, Chancey would love that video, I think. But So, so I want to add, because that song, ha, 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 and they're like, laugh like a lunatic, laugh like a lunatic. And I was listening with my heads, my headphones on, which was actually, I, I love, I like listening to music. Mm -hmm. headphones. And all of a sudden, I hear, like, bird wings in my ears. I'm like, okay, I'm done with it. Like, I had, they had me on that song until I heard the bird, like, bat wings, bird wings, whatever it was. I'm like, no, that's too real for me. <laughs> like, that could be out. So that was... Well, it's, some of the, it's, you know, not, <coughs> it's not bird wings. I'm um, saying no. Because um, well, <laughs> the was, music video, the music video is shot in black and white. So it's like, it's supposed to be like an old movie camera flickering. Oh, that's what, I thought it was bird i was like oh that just creeped me out <laughs> I, I mean, I, 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 did the I mean in, the, in the beginning of the song when like in the beginning of the song when like the alarm clock's going off which i love the alarm clock going off because it reminds me of uh one of my favorite video games left for dead 
Like, that's the sound of the alarm in that game. So when that alarm clock goes off, it's funny that that sound was the same. But because it's like we're around, right around the same time. But in the beginning, like, there's birds, like, chirping a little bit, like, when he's waking up in the morning and whatnot. But it's, I mean, later on in the song, that's, like, a, supposed to be, like, an old camera flickering because the whole video is in black and white. I thought at different points, like, bats were flying by my head. I was like this. So there is that. But then I also noticed, like, as I listened to the album from beginning to end, uh, like, it, it goes in a way like, oh, yeah, I could hear. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, in the middle, it took a turn. <laughs> I was like, whoa, where did this come from? And then it kind of eased itself back into kind of how the beginning songs were. So, yeah. But I was pleasantly surprised. Very much so. Yeah, I mean, with this album, I am more a fan of like the middle and end of it than I am the beginning. The beginning of it, the first few songs I like, but they're not like if if they come up like every day on like songs, I'm not gonna freaking keep like listening to them. I'll skip to the next one. But that the middle of this album is pure fire, pure fire, and it's funny because Chancy, this album came out the same day as Bang Pow Boom was put out by the same Clown Posse, and I went to Fye, bought Bang Pow Boom, and the cashier who I knew, a girl I knew from high school was like, oh, you know, Twisted's album came out today, too. I was like, oh, I'm not a fan of Twisted. And I just bought ICPs and, like, walked away and didn't buy Twisted for, like, six months, and then I finally did, and I was like, fuck. Well, I you bought it. Life. I should have, yes. I should have, but I didn't, I didn't really know who Twisted was at that point, because I was just really getting into ICP deep, and until I heard them on ICP stuff, I was like, okay, then I need to go check out their CDs. Like, but, eh. Oh well, six months. But I, I've been I've been enjoying them for fucking fifteen, twenty years at this point. So I'm I'm not sad. I'm not sad. But Chancy, what did you think of this twisted album? Because you've heard a couple other albums, but none of the albums you heard are as dark as this one. Uh, I mean, I got I got an honorable mention out of it. If that's what you're looking for, Motherfucker. not that I I. Got, I, I I mean, it's not like a, it's not like a whole like dislike of it all or anything like that. It's just that there was a lot of things that saved it from going on my shit list, which <laughs> uh, which is like the like you know the music, the instruments, like like well yeah the samples and all the other stuff. I I like the like you were talking about with the Flutter film, like it kind of reminded me of a. Like a, a a snuff a snuff film for blind people. <laughs> did you say did did you say bind or blind? Motherfucker, blind Stevie Wonder, fucking, oh. you know, like like for fuck's sake, man, how are you gonna show a blind guy a snuff film? Listen, motherfucker, we can work it out, but. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. But uh so you actually enjoy you actually enjoy it to some degree. Uh through gritted teeth, yes. I'll say that I I'll say that and like you know, you were said earlier like that I didn't disappoint you. I'm not quite as disappointed in you as much as I expected I would be. Dude, I, expe- <laughs> I, expected, you, I expected your ass to love this album. I mean it's it's it's, it's okay. I mean I'm not gonna good. I'm not gonna lie. Dark Twisted Soul. It is, and I mean it. You know, and I and I appreciate that. But for me, it's like uh, I I think it's just because I'm so much older. You're not that like, much older. I, I know that, but I've I, I I've done a lot more fucking <laughs> rummaging around in this shit, man. Like it's the gray in your hair. It's just the gray in your hair. Yeah, that's it. It's just you know, it, it, it's it ain't nothing but a color. Uh. I just I gotta die it, you know. It's all good. No, uh, get, like for for get, me, like when you hear somebody. about when you hear about one, you know, one dismembered body, or you know, with all the horror films I've seen, it's just it's got no effect on me. I mean, it's basically just kind of like, oh, okay, some visuals would be pretty cool with this, but it, like whatever, I'll just pretend I'm blind. And well, then, um, ha 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 has an, a video, and I'm. I kept, <laughs> I kept crossroads in my. <laughs> I told uh, I I told myself that if it made the list, then that one was not gonna be like I was every time I read it, I read that shit. I always think about it in like the Stephen Hawking voice. 
ha 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 <laughs> I mean, well, Chancey, we don't need to know what he was saying in Epstein Island, but that I mean that makes it more that seems more maniacal to me is that fucking speaking spell voice fucking that'd be yeah. that'd be more ter- that'd be more terrifying to me than than you know see, some maniacal yeah. laughter. See, when I read it, I always pictured like the Joker laughing. I guess that that if that's one way you could go about it, I mean that would be probably equally as scary. But like, I, I mean that's how, that's how they write it in the comic books when Joker laughs, like all all capital ha 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 ha. So I guess you know what it's fit, it's fitting you would mention the Joker with these with this album because these guys ain't nothing but a couple of jokers. <laughs> They actually did. They actually did a remake of the song "The Joker," but yeah, I'm I'm sure they fucking did. Try to get in, try to grab as much of that fucking coattail as they could, you know. Get up, get up there to that brass ring. No, they actually they actually did a pretty good because you can tell they're stoned as fuck while they're singing it. But I mean, so they actually did a decent job of it. But well, Chancey, you brought one honorable mention. I brought nine, motherfucker. I'm sure you did. I mean, they had it. It's like a, this is like this is honestly just basically like a shotgun blast because they put as many tracks as they could physically fit onto this album and fucking just shoot it all out the barrel at the same time and hope something fucking hits. Yeah. Well, <laughs> sir, chance it's like it's like it's it's a shotgun blast of disappointment and regret is what it is. Well, okay. Thank you for the segue, my man, because you just gave me a segue <laughs> into, into, my, into my first honorable mention. My first honorable mention is Buckets of Blood. So, shotgun blast, Buckets of Blood, there you go. Because, uh, I mean, Buckets of Blood's a good song, but it's just not anywhere near the top of my list. Number 13 was Crossroads In, because they actually did a remix of it on one of DJ Clay's uh, albums, and it was freaking, like, more fast-tempoed and more, like, rock almost, and it was just freaking... The remix is so much better. That's why it's so low. But, I mean, as a paranormal podcaster, I have to love a song about a haunted hotel. Like, to me, that's just kind of awesomeness. And I thought you would love it with your whole motel hell love. But, uh, <laughs> number t- number 12 was Death Note. Because, you know me, I love a song. And Death Note is more as they get. So, I mean, a song about writing a suicide note. Yeah, so. And it's way better than Stan, so. I was waiting for the meltdown, but okay. <laughs> um, no, number 11 was That's Wicked. Because, uh, I mean, I love the beat in that. Like, just the perfect the beat in the background of that is freaking amazing. That's wicked. Like, I mean, it's, it's them. It's perfect. Number 10 was Catch the Show, because, like, the last three tracks in this album are just, like, it's like they're like, all right, these are all bon- these they're all bonus tracks. They were all bonus tracks in the original CD. They weren't all on the same CD. You had, you had to like get all th- three CDs to get each one until they released this version on Spotify. But uh, because I downloaded the two I didn't have, but Catch the Show is just a class. It's more of a classic twisted rap. It's just like about juggle life. And I mean, the part of the song where they where he picks up the girl and she's like. I'm look. She's looking through the CDs, and she stopped that wicked. And Bit said, "I forgot my ticket." It's like, oh my god, like that's hilarious. Like I freaking, the whole song is pretty funny. So, and plus the beat in that one. I mean, I swear to God, I don't know if it was Mikey Clark or DJ Clay doing all the beats for this track because they were still under ICP at this point. But whoever it was, they did a fucking amazing job. Number nine was when I get to hell because the lyrics in that song are beyond phenomenal. I'll be taking all the pills off Heath. That Heath Ledger left on his dresser. Like, that's fucking shit's hilarious. But. And the whole Marilyn Monroe part of it freaking has me dying laughing every time I heard it. And I haven't heard that song in a long time. When I heard it today, I was dying laughing for the Marilyn Monroe part. <laughs> it just always makes me fucking die. Number eight was They Told Me. Because that song, I feel like it's powerful for mental health. Because it's basically telling everybody to fuck. It's basically telling everybody to fuck off. Like, your opinion doesn't matter. So, I mean. I, I've always loved that song. It's always been powerful to me. Number seven was Killing Season because it's just a kind of a great opening track. And yeah, I mean, no other reason needed. They're all fucking amazing. Number six was Gothic Chick because this came out at a time in my life when that was the dream. Find the Gothic Chick, marry her. So 
this that song was just fucking perfect to me like at that point in my life and and whenever twisted does like their love songs or i should be they're always fucking hilarious and dark at the same time which is just scary so i don't know be a good horror movie that one right there top five though yeah number five was yeah yeah and number five was it don't stop because i love i had to put one of their classic rap ones on here and i mean I don't know. That's the last song of the album. They just end it perfectly with that. Cause it's not even a horror track. It's just a pure bonus track. Like that's how they normally rap. That's how they rap when they, when they actually rap nowadays. That's more how they rap is that. But number four was all the above because that song is fucking beautiful. I mean, it's I I I can literally replay that song like ten times in a row, and not get sick of it. I can rap along while it's playing word for word. It's just such a beautiful song, and I mean. I don't know. I like songs based on funerals. I don't know why, whether it's Esham or Twisted, like funeral songs actually about funerals just somehow do to me. I don't get that. Morbid. But number three was Whoa Whoa, because mm-hmm. I don't know. That's the, the emotion in that song is so fucking raw. And I, I love when Twisted actually like rap sings, like when they're actually singing a little bit too. Like, I mean, they inspire Dark Half, which Chansey knows who that is, but they inspire Dark Half with their singy rap type shit they do, so... Twisted oh, yeah, didn't they use fucking auto-tuner on this album? I don't God, think so. God, that was... I'm pretty sure they did on one of the tracks. I remember I remember that, like... That really kicked this album right in the fucking dick for me. Like, I was like, are you fucking serious right now? I personally, I'm not a... I was in choir Wait, are you, when I... Grew- are, you, are you talking about Dark Half or Twisted? Twisted. This album. Oh. I don't think I'm, they did. I'm I am almost a hundred percent certain because there wasn't there dude there was an auto tune track on one of the albums that I listened to because I got upset about it and the only one that it fucking makes sense for is yours dude oh actually <laughs> it might be the song I hate it might be the song I hate that's the only song I could hear oh about. my god dude like I heard that shit and I was like oh I cannot fucking wait for this I remember I remember now. Cause yeah, no, I was like, I was like, why the fuck is there auto tune on this garbage? Like, first off, it's not. It was uh, doing all. It was doing all right, and then it was uh, like, okay, now this is trashy. This is trashy. Uh, are you thinking about that? Are you thinking about the song "My Enemies"? Probably. Fucking, I don't know. I don't remember which one that, it was. I just remember hearing it going. What in the absolute fuck is this nonsense? Because that's the that, that's the song I freaking hate. So I mean, that might be why I hate that song. I don't really. I just tell why I just I don't it, like. But I just don't yeah. like auto tune. I don't like auto tune or pitch correct. I mean, if you can't do it, then don't try. Like, knock it off. <laughs> I, I mean, but then again, Violin J would have been the one uh, producing this album, not them. So I don't care. Uh, it's just as so much their it. fault. It's just as much their fault as anybody else. Uh, somebody, dude, somebody goes. If, somebody goes. Hey, you should no, do this. I'd be like, no. nah, go fuck yourself. No, if you if you if you know psychopathic records, like you see it all, Violent J he has foul say in fucking everything you do, and if you say oh, no, yeah. you're off the label. Yeah, that's probably but, why they're off the label and started their own shit. I mean, I don't know. It, that's what I mean. Like that. That's that's logical. That's logical. I mean, and my my number two, after chance of being a fucking dick, uh, was uh, Bella Morte because, like I said, when Twisted Doves love songs, they do them right, and like the whole. She's calling me again, chorus. Like it always fucking like hits so hard, especially when they come at the end with the drums in it and shit too. It's like, oh, I don't know. It's fucking when they do their songs like that. It's fucking done right. And number one was whoop whoop because I mean Juggalo call. <laughs> get your laughs out, funny boy. Oh, you'll you'll think it's just as funny when I get to my fucking list, dude. So you could just go fuck yourself with fade with failing wire. That's I'm just saying. Sounds. But uh, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I I love whoop whoop because that chorus I've used those lines so many times. You could like the, you'll never be as good as me, even if I became you. Like that line is perfect. Like I've used that in so many people in my life. So, and whoop whoop is just that the freaking beat and tempo in that song is just fucking perfect. Like I love this from like the fourth song down this album all the way through. It's pretty much a perfect CD. The first three so- tracks are kind of like, eh, I could hit or miss, but 
fourth track down or if I can just fire, 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 fire. But I will not forget this time. Leanne, what are your top five? Yeah, I was going to say, don't forget this time. Okay, well, I was checking to see if I had any of those top of the first four, and I don't. So <laughs> apparently I agree with you. Um, so, all right, my top five. I have Death Note. I have Whoop Whoop. I have Whoop Whoop. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> apparently well, I'm... Well, Whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, it's technically whoa, 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 but I mean, it's they yeah, don't whoa, put two of them. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoop, whoop. I got carried away. Uh, Gotham chick. Or, oh. Yeah, Gotham. Not Gotham. Gothic. Gothic chick. Yep. And uh, Catch the Show. Mm. It is more of like I would say I would have to say "Catch the Show" is the closest to like a BC Boys type rap song they have in this album. So, yeah. So yeah, I was I was like, okay, those. Now, you, it, what I found interesting is like you were like picking out the lyrics that really spoke to you. <laughs> I tuned the lyrics out. I'm like, these are so dark, <laughs> like fucking everything. <laughs> <laughs> but I like I like that I like the music a lot. Uh, I mean. Well, I mean, that's why I like hardcore. The lyrics, like, speak to me in ways, like, not like the go kill people lyrics, but, like, the emotions in between those lyrics, like, speak to me is what it is. And Twisted hits a lot of emotions, like, uh, both of them, uh, Jimmy Madrox and Monoxide Child, they both are, they know what it's like to be outcast and to be fat kids. So I can relate to them a lot when I, when I was younger. And so hardcore speaks to me for that for a lot, because a lot of hardcore artists are just fat boys. There's fat kids who wanted to get their anger out, and that's how they did, it, rather yeah. than go kill, rather than killing people or being criminals. Well, that's what I I was I was intrigued by both these picks, and so I went and did a little bit of research online about like especially twist twisted because I was like I had never heard of them at all, and so I was reading about their background a, a bit and why they chose to write about what they wrote about, and I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have known, so that therefore that's why I look to get a better understanding. Um, but I still have an appreciation for what they're doing, and and some of the, like I wouldn't be surprised if I go back and listen to some of a few of these songs uh, from both albums again and again. I mean, you you got to remember, Twisted literally grew up on Seven Mile. I mean, you think Eight yeah. Mile is bad? The closer you get to Detroit, the worse it is. So Seven Mile is worse than Eight Mile, and they literally grew up in Seven Mile, and like. They actually have told stories on podcasts and stuff before about like how when they were getting like when they when they had a they had a group called House of Crazies before they were twisted and they would be like painting their own sets for their shows and everything and Eminem would run by the house and be like oh those are some cool sets you guys have and like keep going but I mean so they they interacted with him like way back before he was anything very cool I mean I can't do his voice but uh Mad Rocks <laughs> can do Eminem, Mad Rocks can do Eminem's voice perfectly and it's been used. Uh, by ICP to make fun of Eminem multiple times. So, interesting. There's there's a song out there called uh, "Slim Anus" that's freaking hilarious. So, <laughs> and and there, and there's like two more there, freaking hilarious. But you know, uh, Chance, what were your top five for Twisted? So I I already looked and I can tell you it's not my enemies that has that fucking auto tune in it because Which that made it? my. That made my list, and I know I wouldn't have put it on my list if it had that garbage on there. Even if I wanted to fucking give you a bad time about it, I wouldn't dare write it down on this off chance that like it makes my list. <laughs> no, the ones that I wrote on my list were the ones that I actually like enjoyed off of the thing. Like I was like, you know what, this ain't terrible. I can live with this. So like for me, number six for because I had an honorable mention was all of the above. Uh, number five was uh, Crossroad Inn. Uh, number four was My Enemies. Uh, number three was When I Get to Hell. Uh, number two was Bella Morte. And number one was Whoop Whoop. That's why I was laughing, because our like number one and number two are basically the same. See, they were still with ICP at this point uh, for this CD and then uh, like two after. But I think Whoop Whoop was almost like a way, like an insider like note of like, yeah, things are going on behind the scenes. They're not good. We're going to be... I think it was like a diss towards ICP in a way. Hmm. I, I guess I, I'll have to go back and look at the... Uh, like, obviously... I'll have to I, go back I and look at it. 
I didn't realize it for like fucking six, seven years because they didn't leave the freaking label for six, seven years after that. And I was like, when I, when I heard that song again, I'm like, wait a minute. Was this foreshadowing at its best? I don't know, but uh, it's just, I don't know. Twisted has always been one of my favorite rap groups. So I kind of have fallen out away from them with their newer stuff because it's, some of it's too rock. Like some of it's too like early 2000s rock sounding. It's just like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Like you were one of the best rap groups out there for a long fucking time in the hardcore scene. Like, Jesus Christ. I mean, I guess you got busy running a label and shit, which isn't doing well to begin with, but come on. You guys got to fix something up here. I mean, fuck, if you got to go back to ICP, go back to ICP for fuck's sake to go back to what you sound like. But I don't know. Twisted will be back at some point, Chansey, because they have a lot more albums I haven't gotten to yet, including some of their newer ones, which I think you're going to freaking love. Because it's like kind of your music more than anything. Minus mentions of chloroform girls and whatnot, but... Or should I say chloroform squirrels? But <laughs> uh, how dare so how dare how dare you sully that good song by even bringing it anywhere near these awful bands? Eh, Dogfish and Disco and Twister are not that far apart, my friend. But polka dot cadaver, but that's okay. Polka dot, yeah, damn, fucking same people, different names. But hey, man, details but, matter. Well, Leanne, we, <laughs> folks, that's our show. Three albums brought to you, all enjoyable. So, we actually haven't had it. We haven't had an episode in a while where I actually hated one of the albums. So, it's been a good month. We'll see how that keeps going. But, yeah. I was going to say, this is the one I, I can't remember an episode where I hated your album, you know, any less than I did this time. So, I mean, that, hey, thumbs up, guy. Thumbs uh... up. You still gotta go slam your you, you still gotta go slap your dick in the door though. And fuck that band. Don't even don't even fucking talk about that. We don't talk about that fucking awfulness. All right. That's like my offspring, okay? Like we don't talk about those picks. Those picks just don't fucking we don't talk about those. At least you shouldn't anyway. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think that, yeah. that, that, that that should be one of our that should be one of our greatest episodes of all time. Cause both me and the guest fucking just raked you over the coals for the entirety of the episode. Yes, Chancy. They'll be back I, again. Don't don't you worry. Don't oh, you worry. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. You got They have you like got, 18 it, more albums. They have like 18 more fucking albums. They'll be proud. Oh God. They do. But like, oh my God. They have one every single year since like 2006. And it's all uh, the same garbage. Wait a minute, wait a minute. 2006. Cottonmouth Kings has been having one every year since 98. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was out Twisted. <laughs> oh, no. Tw Tw Twisted, Twisted's had a... Well, they've had an album every year, basically, since... Uh, when did fucking Most Tasteless come out? I want to say 97. And then, oh. I mean, they were, House of Cra they were House of Crazy since, like, 94. So, that's the funny thing people don't realize. ICP and Twisted... ICP rapped, was rapping around the same time as... They started around the same time NWA did. And... Twisted started around the same time as, like, God, like, I want to say Wu-Tang and a bunch of other famous rap groups. I mean, they started right around the same time Tupac and Biggie did, too. So, I mean, they've all they've been, they've been around for fucking ever. <laughs> it's just underground. They were underground for a long time, all of them, until they got mainstream in the late 90s. But and that's why because people hated them. That's why they became mainstream. That's the funniest thing in the world. ICP, the world's most hated band, and Twisted was right there next to them, so... But <laughs> it's just the way it goes. But you gotta learn. You gotta love. You gotta learn to love the things other people hate. Like my co-host here. But uh, Leanne, it was a pleasure having you on, and it was definitely a fun episode. We'd be happy to have you back on again anytime. I'm sure there's plenty more music we could find that might disturb you a little. But oh, thanks. I could probably find some that you hate. <laughs> Not that hard to do. Well, okay, maybe. It, and yet, maybe and yet, no one's brought Taylor Swift on. But I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm Taylor Swift's okay. <laughs> but ah, uh, I. I was yeah, wondering. That, about that. <laughs> Taylor Swift's not bad. We have a friend who is a huge Swifty, so I've had to do. I've had to sit through a bracket of Taylor Swift of thirty-two for fucking songs, and e <laughs> yeah. It, she's not horrible, but I cannot listen to her every day. It would make me want to go do horrible things with my own body. But 
involving sharp instruments. But uh yeah, you're welcome back on any time. If you want to try to find something I hate, oh, I, I welcome you. <laughs> try to find something I actually hate. It's actually a little hard. I mean, there's not a lot I hate. Even if I hate even if I think I hate something, I usually find a reason to like it somehow. Ask Chancy. A lot a lot of his music. Oh. I I could make a suggestion. Yeah. Anything from Sunhouse. Yeah, watch. She brings the Sunhouse out a uh, Sunhouse album I actually like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I might just bring something completely different. We'll see. Yeah, I would love to come back. This was really fun. And I actually appreciate uh listening to something, you know, that I wouldn't normally go grab. So that was really cool. And yeah. actually well, actually, here's the idea. Because, folks, we are doing a special Saturday morning edition episode this weekend with another stand-up comic. I That just happened randomly. She was supposed to be on, like, four months ago, but then she kept getting pushed out for different reasons. And we are doing a stand-up comedy album episode. So maybe if you want, next time you come back, Leanne, if you want to do one of those, we can gladly, that be more in your wheelhouse, and we can gladly do that. I mean, there's yeah. plenty more than three, there's plenty more than three stand-up comedy albums out there, so we could do a bunch of those if we want to so but yes that's coming on uh saturday folks and she's bringing her own stand-up comedy album against well one legend and whoever the hell chance he brought so uh i don't even remember who i brought at this point i have to i have to send you the three it's it's on my emails to her i know who they are i just got the i forget i forget who the fuck yours is but i know who mine is there's gonna be some ron white talking about on saturday chancy but that's cool. one of the best one of the best stand-up comics of all time we've seen live but uh, but yeah so that'll be saturday and then next tuesday we're back with another regular episode as planned as always and then the following saturday will be the rolling stone top 500 songs bracket part five they come up so soon now and you're mentioning black sabbath there's two black sabbath songs in this one and two prince songs and two grateful dead songs and a Taylor Swift song and a bunch of other amazing songs. This this part actually is a fucker. This last part wasn't that hard, but this part's gonna be harder than freaking <sighs> Chancy listening to Thunderkiss sixty five as a youth. So, but Leanne, why don't you tell people where they can find you, where they can find everything you do, promote yourself to the fullest. Yeah, so I am Leanne. I am the founder of Plausible, which is an online comedy club. And you can go and check it out, create a free account, hop on an open mic, check out a show. And it's plausible.com, P-L-A-U-Z-Z-A-B-L-E.com. Yeah, do that. Definitely going to go check it out. And I'm definitely going to recommend uh, it to my one stand-up comedian friend who we've done, we've done an ep- two episodes with her in the past, but... Uh, and actually, she's done a bunch of brackets too. One of them is actually named for her. But uh, so I mean, yeah, she's hilarious. I freaking got to tell her to go check it out. But Chancy, where can they find you besides the void? Listening to Thunder Kiss sixty five, like it's freaking porn. So um, the world's most uneventful scavenger hunt is becoming a lot less uneventful because <laughs> <laughs> someone found you again. Yeah, dude, it happened. Um, well, and... Chancy, you have to think. You have to think. This streams live in a group where you're an admin, and you're and they know my name, and you're a friend of mine. So, it, how hard is it really to fucking find you? These people aren't from the group, though. That's the okay. Thing. And, we, and we have stalkers who just want to fuck with you. Okay, that's awesome. I mean, I'm I'm cool with it. It's fine, but. Uh... But uh, I, I've been talking with him for a little bit, and he's pretty cool. His name is Tom. He's from Kentucky. He gave me an album to pick out, and I got to bring it next. Uh, be this Tuesday, apparently. So uh, well, he's from Kentucky. Hey, it's not. It, it's not. It. I haven't listened to it yet, but it's not what you. It's not. It's not what you're gonna think it is, buddy. It's not the Osmond siblings in a very Alabama way. Nope. Okay. Good. But what? where can they but find you, Chancy? Uh, I, they oh, can, do you remember the? I remember him this time. Uh, so, for the next person, this is my actual first name. If you can find me, you can pick an album, and uh, you know I'll bring it to the show. If I haven't brought, if it hasn't already been brought before. On, yeah, uh, that, 
that master day issue. I need to work on that. And on uh, uh, Instagram and TikTok, it's the Red Eye Roundtable. On X, it's Red Eye Table. And, uh, you know, here. <laughs> yes. I am Chancey's Puppet Master. And you can find both of us on Facebook as Uncensored, Unapologetic, an Untamed Podcast Collective, YouTube, Facebook group. You can find us on XX Baby in the Graham as that Juggalo Bastard. You can find us on TikTok at Juggalo Bastard Podcast to see our hilarious clips from our brackets, including the newest one of Chansey. Explain to me so kindly, I need a role model. And you can also find us on YouTube as Maniacal Music Musings or streaming live on Facebook as well on Parapost Network, a great place for all podcasts and podcasts for every genre. And, like I said, folks, we'll be back three times in the next two weeks. So, you're welcome. We slave for you. It's okay. We're like the damn slaves getting whipped in the beginning of a critical filth video. But, we will be back on Saturday. And we want to thank Leanne one last time for coming on. Because it's been a pleasure having her on the show. And she will definitely be back maybe in our summer of repeats. Which will be happening this summer. So, we'll see. And, until then, Muser's out. Remember, Thunderkid 65 gets Chansey Ornery.